My name is Alan, and on behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, I mean, it just seems like so much is going on in the world. I mean, today, for it seems like the umpteenth time recently, a teenage kid, and a teenage kid and younger lately, has went into a school with a gun after killing his mother and father, and then started shooting his classmates. And it's just extraordinary to me that we've gotten so far away from love and so far away from connection and so far away from an experience of, of oneness, of love. And, and yet it happens so much. And I know, and, and we, we talk about it every week, we experience it every week, and hopefully we experience it every day more and more and more and every minute of every day. But there is an experience of, of love, of bliss, of joy, of connectedness between all of us, but whatever color or creed or, or religion or nationality or where we live or state, or I probably said the same thing in four different ways, but whatever it is, there's a place where we're all connected, where we're all brothers and sisters, and that's the experience we want. We were talking earlier today, and really in a human body, what, what we want to feel, all of us, is to feel love, is to feel connected, to feel that our head is in the lap of God. However way we define God, however way we experience God, however way that that reality means something to us, manifests for us, that's what we want to feel. We don't want to be rich, we don't want to be famous, we don't want to we don't want to be married or not married or a certain sexual preference or, or any of the things that we think really matter to us. What we want to feel is a true love that's not dependent on any of, the, of those things. And for, for us here tonight, we're honored again to have somebody with us, Claire Hartson, who's been here before and we get just tremendous response every time she's here. And her life is about connecting to love, about opening the heart, about having an experience where that, that love, that truth, that bliss is what makes us all move. It, it is what makes us move and to come into recognition of that fully and truly. And she's going to do a, a guided meditation. She's brought with her some extraordinary video. And I think we're in for a wonderful night again. And we just need all to come together. I mean, what's going on with, with this murdering and, and hate and I mean, I wrote the screenplay at one time, and, and, and at the end of it, I said that if everybody in like the Middle East, which was the real hotspot at the time, and as it turns out, it still is, and if everybody got amnesia and they didn't know who to hate, that if they woke up the next day, I mean, you wouldn't know. Everybody looks the same, dresses the same, probably talks very similarly. We wouldn't know who to hate. And people would have to teach us who to hate because we've hated them for thousands of centuries. But it's time we went beyond that. It's time we really came to the place of love. And it's really more and more available to all of us. So I know that for the next 57, 58, 59 minutes, if you stay with us and stay with Claire and the videos and the music we have, that, that an experience will lift you and lift us closer to that experience of universal love. So please join with me now as we do to just just relax us all after whatever we've done today and just let's just try to quiet down and experience the peace within us so please join me Thank you very much. And now we're going to have an, another honor that Bridging Heaven and Earth has gotten. If I don't know if you've listened to the music. I guess if you watch the show, unless you just t tuned it in right now, the opening, the opening credits uh, have music on them from Omishar. And he has certain words in there, and it's a short piece. I think the opening's like two minutes. But he's written a full song, the Bridging Heaven and Earth song, that's going to be on his next album. Uh, it's called, I think at this point, it's called Bridging Heaven and Earth. And with that, we're going to have a, a slide presentation that has parts of it have been on the show before by Walter Matheson. So whenever we're ready in the booth, we have the Omish, the new, completely new Omishash song, and here it comes. We shared the 
Hi, and we're here with Claire. Well, welcome, Claire. Thanks for coming Thanks. back again. It's wonderful to be back again. So for people who are not familiar with your story, why don't you describe what the Hathors, I mean, we, we had on the opening credits that you're a Hathor emissary for some people. Who, it's like a Samsonite. She uses Samsonite <laughs> luggage. So why don't you, you know, start at the, the beginning for people who haven't seen you before. Oh, well, great. Yeah, some of the luggage that I'm opening. And <laughs> right. <laughs> been taking out some of the apparel that I haven't worn for a long time happens to be my Hathor costume. And uh, so the, the Hathors are, are wondrous beings uh, who um, come from a parallel universe. That sounds pretty far out, yet they're very much accessible and available to us here as, 
as emissaries and, and masters of love and sound. And um, they represent also a very feminine maternal energy which facilitates exactly that prayer that you were invoking earlier in, in our program, that kind of embracing love that will facilitate the discordant experiences that we've been having on the planet. So, so their, their kind of their mission now is to help us to, to bring harmony to where there was disharmony. Exactly, by embracing the disharmony and allowing for a process that's called high alchemy or transmutation that takes that energy which is love ultimately and has been simply demonstrating the opposite polarity so that we can come to know the masters that we are as beings of love through the contrast mm. and by having the opportunity then of the extremes of polarity and duality in these dramas of our life we can begin to forgive that energy which is love expressing as its opposite in this scenario that you described earlier mm -hmm. and we can begin to understand that truly what was desired in everyone who participated in that was an opportunity to remember love to have, we're at choice right now mm -hmm. and the extremes of those polarities of fear and hatred and love and compassion are becoming very very apparent so that we can choose hmm. and, uh, so how did you get involved I mean, how did you I mean you know I mean I've done a lot of things in my life and I haven't been necessarily uh -huh. connected in that particular way so right. what was your experience in getting connected uh, well in getting connected with Hathors actually began when I was a child and I had the experience of these pillars of light in my bedroom and then later um, in 1986, I was meditating, and there was this extraordinary being, about 14 feet tall. The, the Hathors are, you know, average 10 to 14 feet. And uh, he, this was a masculine Hathor energy who emanated extraordinary love. And he said, when you're ready, I'll be back again. And I'll be back. So it was, it was Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back when you're ready. No, right. And yeah, and, and I, how long I was did it take? a year and a half. Uh -huh. And in between, there were two feminine Hathors who came. And the first came with a drum. And she said, It's time now to open your throat. And previously, I had been one of those children and young adults who was invited not to sing. Right. You were asked to please. If yeah, you please. I mean, Do over dance. there. <laughs> play the piano, but please don't play that. <laughs> and don't play the drum because you cannot carry <laughs> a rhythm. <laughs> so it's been a wondrous opportunity for healing and opening this expressive center and coming forward, sort of unzipping. If you, if I were to stand, you would see that I'm four and a half feet tall, and allowing for this 14-foot pillar of light. Mm -hmm to emerge it's through you through me yeah that's fantastic so i'm becoming more transparent so so now you're going around the country and the world in a sense uh just toning and bringing that that experience that vibration yes that that can harmonize the seeming disharmony exactly so the sounds that come through are not always the most beautiful kind of performance the hathers don't care very much about beautiful ego performance, although they appreciate it. Mm -hmm. They're interested in healing our emotional feeling nature. And so in their capacity to be in compassion and, and this flow of love, they are fearless. So they simply view discordant ex emotional expression as like some bass notes in a full register that mm -hmm. a symphony can play you know when it's warming up mm -hmm. those kinds of sounds and so it can come through sometimes sounding a little strange mm -hmm. weird sometimes uh, really resonating 
with something that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's like when that energy is acknowledged in that way, it's like, oh, wow, you mean I can actually experience this uncomfortable feeling and I'm still loved? Right. And the answer is yes, mm -hmm. always. And right. they'll hold that frequency of coherent love. So, so that someone is never out of love, which it's, is because they're ultimately they're made of love, but it's yes. like a stepping stone to understanding that, exactly. to coming into tune with Right, that. right. And, th and because they're always holding the resonance of the heart, the open heart that bridges heaven and earth, mm -hmm. And with their embracing arms, giving people plenty of human beings plenty of space to do our dramas, however we choose to do it. Mm -hmm. And then there's a resonance of the heart of love that is eventually felt and invites a new choice, a new empowered expression to come forth. Well, in my experience, and, and I, I would like to know your opinion, I mean, the more you experience love rather than, or harmony or connectedness yes. ra rather than separation, I mean, it's almost like there's no choice in a sense because one is so much better than the other in a human body. One eventually, feels so much better. Yes, eventually we come to that kind of an alignment where we're choosing that which is love always. Well, at a certain point, it's almost like there's no choice, right. in a it's, sense, because yeah. we are that. If we, we are, line up yes. exactly with the energy yes. that we are, yes. love is the energy of the universe. Love is the creative force. Or that's what it would feel. That's yes. how a human would describe it, or bliss, or however. Exactly. We come into a place of of preferred experience, and uh, and we leave behind the drama that is involved that creates the opportunity and the blessing that results out of choice through contrast mm -hmm. and that's equally as divine mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's the process of it right. i mean we're coming yeah. coming it full looks circle full circle right, right. and and we're going to have you're going to do a guided meditation yes. and also uh in we're also going to do a t t hear a tape of you doing some toning with Tom Kenyon, who you, an associate you've worked with before. Why don't you tell a little bit about that and also about the video we're going to show for that too? Uh -huh. um, Tom Kenyon is a, is a wonderful brother with the, whom the Hathors have been facilitating their sound uh, almost six years now. And he's written a book and, and has been facilitating seminars and intensives around the country for quite a while. And he's going to be going into sabbatical, an indefinite sabbatical, while he's going through some empowering initiations. And in the meantime, there have been many individuals who are being contacted by the Hathors, not just Tom and myself. And I'm choosing to step forward now, kind of filling the, the space, although my work is different than Tom's. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that in the second segment mm -hmm. after the meditation. Right. You're coming out with an incredible new book that we've been talking exactly. about. So I'd love to really right. have people start hearing about that. So Tom and I came together about two months ago and the Hathors invited us to bring through the Hathor sound and it was an extraordinary experience. We were seeing them and they were going like this, oh goody goody, and any of you who know the Hathors have, they know, you know that they have a great sense of humor and they're going, oh goody goody, we haven't done this in over 3,000 years really? on your planet. Wow. So that was the first time that this extraordinary sound was coming through a male and a female body simultaneously. So on, on a certain level of, of energy, uh, like downshifting, that was like a balancing of the polarities. In exactly. A sense. And there were times when I was uh, very masculine in the sound and he was very feminine times you know it, mm -hmm. and we were very androgynous mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, okay so we're going to do that in a second but why don't you speak a little about the guided meditation or introduce that right. a little because we're going to go right from the the sound toning right. and, and the the video of of tom's into the guided meditation yes so we'll be um experiencing an opportunity of going with the hathors on a journey and an opportunity of experiencing what's called bilocation, where the uh, your 
subtle energy body, your soul as it were, will have an opportunity of experiencing a simultaneous reality as the Hathors take us into the Hall of Records in Egypt. The Hall of Records the, are under the pyramids? Or under, under, under the, the pyramids the, and the Sphinx. Sphinx. And uh, if you wish, you might have a pencil and paper. The, um, there may be some questions that will be asked as we enter the Hall of Records where you can access some of the um, aspects of your life's journey, your soul's journey, and, and perhaps what is your life's purpose right here, right now. Wow, that's fantastic. All right, there will so, be some sound. Yeah, are we ready in the control room to show the, uh, the, the video and the audio? Okay, whenever you're ready, let's do it.
placing your awareness now into your heart center and imagine that you are sitting within a golden square based pyramid and the capstone of this pyramid is a blue purple violet flame and with your awareness still centered in your heart bring your attention also to your sexual area the second chakra directly behind the sexual glands and simultaneously have your awareness on the capstone of the pyramid and a golden energy now will create a line of force on the vertical plane moving deeply into your body and radiating through all of the subtle fields of your body assisting healing and opening and activation and as you sit comfortably continuing to breathe with your awareness in your heart and in your second chakra and the capstone of the pyramid in this column of golden white light we will now imagine that you have around you 12 golden rings somewhat like hula hoops or donuts of golden light and we will now bring our awareness simultaneously to any manner in which you can imagine the great pyramid in Egypt and the lion sphinx with the head of a man below the sphinx and the great pyramid are great and vast chambers wherein are contained records from the beginning of time upon this earth within it is also your book of life memories that you may bring forward at this time to remember more fully who you are and the purpose that you've come to fulfill at this time so as you breathe bringing your awareness simultaneously upon the sphinx and the hall of records below and to your physical body seated as you are here in the space where you find yourself with these 12 golden rings you will now begin to experience that the top ring which is right above your head about this height is now beginning to lift off following an arc of intention immediately going into the hall of records below the sphinx and as I count now from 12 into 1 you will begin to experience your consciousness lifting out of your physical body while still being aware of your presence here and in Egypt at the same time 12 the golden ring is lifting moving over an arc of light and now 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 In whatever way is comfortable for you, imagine now that you are standing at the entry point 
into the hall of records below the great sphinx. The door is now opening. You are not alone. You have a guide, a being of great light and love, who now is standing before you. And you are following now this great and wondrous master through a lit, lit corridor, descending now. We go downward, spiraling, moving to the left, and then ahead, descending yet more. And another door opens, and a great burst of white light. gathers you now into an inner chamber and as you go forward you see there a cube a golden cube and you are beckoned to sit now on this golden cube you place your body in such a way that your feet are directly below your knees, creating a 90 degree angle. Your spine is erect so that the torso of your body and your thighs are creating another 90 degree angle. And your arms are sitting in such a way that your forearms and hands are resting on your thighs, creating another 90 degree angle. Your head is looking straight ahead, erect, upon your shoulders. Now there is a beam of light that is moving on this vertical column and as you breathe you're going into the experience yet more profoundly and before you now is a great sphere golden in color and it is a hologram into which you may look through all time and space, into which you may now begin to experience an aspect of yourself, beginning to emerge, beginning to coalesce with every breath. It is though you are looking at a screen projecting a lifetime in which you resided on the earth or on another planet or another star and this particular life in which your soul had an experience that is pertinent that is important for you to understand your present life more fully so now if you have a pen and paper. Some questions will be asked. First of all, we will now allow for some sounds to come forth. Encircling us in this beautiful chamber are the Hathors. There are now 13 Hathors gathered around you. You are in the center. And taking a deep breath. The Hathors are raising their hands. And there is a great flow of light emerging through their hands, their hearts, and through the third eye. And this light is like a spoke of a wheel from these 13 Hathors. And you may, as you choose, receive this emanation of light as an empowerment 
and as a way of activating your personal book of life and the records that you are accessing at this time as now the Hathors begin to pulse this light and sound. I before you is a most beautiful master of love and sound and this master is opening a scroll this master can answer any question that you have You might first of all ask, What is my name? How do my friends know me in this place? And allow for the first immediate answer that comes forth and write it on the paper. And now, the second question might be, what was my major life's lesson here? What wisdom did I come to gain? Who do I know in my life, in my present body, in the year 1998, is now present with me in my relationships who I knew at that time. What role did they play then and what role are they playing now? And lastly, the question might be, why am I here on planet Earth at this pivotal time of the Earth's ascension? What is my purpose? What have I come to do, to express? It is my highest truth.
now beginning to experience the rings of light beginning to lift. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and now coming back into your present physical focus here now taking a deep breath emphasizing the exhalation another deep breath and again fantastic thank you Claire I'm sure we had just an extraordinary experience so and uh, now we're going to actually have uh, some more of that video by Big Dipper Productions and Tom Kenyon and also the uh, the toning uh, that harmonious uh, uh, of the duality toning of, of Claire and Tom Kenyon so whenever that's ready to go we can run that and then we'll come back and talk to Claire about uh, uh, her new book. Okay, so take it away. Thank you. fantastic clear so why don't you give people a little indication of this new book that seems to be coming through you oh, it's yeah. so exciting I know you're impassioned I don't know oh. how much time we have but just start you know, all right well just let it roll um, if the cameras would like to come over here and um, get these pictures this particular one is of the uh, grandmother of the one that we call Jesus the Christ in his in the, his native language, he spoke as uh, Aramaic, and his name was called Yeshua ben Joseph, the son of Joseph, and his mother Mary, and uh, Yeshua as a babe, and the other picture is of uh, Yeshua at the time of the crucifixion and resurrection. This book is a very exciting project because his grandmother, Anna of Carmel, is a, a wondrous being who is now making contact with humanity again and is choosing to bring this story, her story, through me 
in a fashion that allows for a, a whole new and different perspective of his story to be told through the eyes of the Divine Mother. The Divine Mother's mother. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. So we're getting, because it used to be the Divine Mother, we used to be thought of as, as Mother Mary. Mary. Now we're going one step. Some, some additional generations. <laughs> and the Hathors actually are very much the Divine Mother as well and connected with Isis who set through her example with Osiris and Horus, also this wondrous trinity. Hmm. So, 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 I mean, you're in the process, you're halfway, th part of the way through with all this information. Yes. It's like, in a sense, it's what's coming out, a lot of it is the lost years of, of Jesus. That's and, and right. Different, maybe, misconceptions or mis misideas, <laughs> that's the word I just made up, <laughs> of what the whole story went and how it went and what his, yes. what how he proceeded here. Exactly, and there have been numerous ones who have brought forward different understandings and perspectives of the Yeshua story. This is yet another, mm -hmm. and what they, what I'm reminded is, is the energy of, of love coming through that's being transmitted through the words and through the story, that is the key. And if lives can be changed and there can be a greater sense of self-mastery because there's an understanding of one's inner divinity and capacity to love the unlovable within oneself and in whatever is being reflected in one's life, at, Would at you present. say anything is unlovable, or just we define it that we way? We define it that way. We've invalidated it in some way mm -hmm. and, and have pushed it away from ourself, but actually it's also ourself. And as we come to love ourself, then we can love all. Mm -hmm. If, if in, a, in just a short amount of time, if you could like, I mean, you've had obviously so many extraordinary and fantastic experiences, just in, in, in like, say, 30 seconds or a minute, what would you... How would you tell somebody to, to take their next day or their next week or breath or what piece mm. of advice would you well, I'm glad offer? You, I'm glad you mentioned the breath because the more that we can be present in the movement of the flow of breath, then we can be fully present with the God, Goddess within ourselves, that inner divinity, that spark of all-knowingness. We can know our I know sense, our innocence, and experience that in the whole of our life. So coming back to the breath, peace be still and know I am God. Wow. All right, so I guess again, you know, the show's almost over and uh, so you know, it's been wonderful it's been being a, here again, yeah. Alan. I appreciate so, I, yeah, so much. Also, we're already planning for the next season, so we got a lot of stuff. Yeah, by out. the next time that I'm back, we'll have a book and we'll be sharing more fully about Anna's story. All right, so again, I want to thank everybody, and it's just been an extraordinary show. So please, you know, check out the website. Thank you for coming. We love you. Good night. God bless you. Please be in love.